Listen, Amazo, I said. I'm really sorry I stole your magic bag. I know it was a terrible thing to do. Shove this stupid dummy aside and sit down on the couch, Amazo said. I moved the dummy and sat down next to Amazo. You really love magic, don't you? He said. My heart started pounding. This was the heart-to-heart -heart magician talk I'd been hoping to have with Amazo all along. It, it's my dream to be a magician, I told him. A great magician like you, I'd do anything. Anything. Well, you were great in the magic show the other night, Amazo said. You disappeared very well, kid. Thanks. Amazo sat quietly for a moment. He seemed to be thinking. You can't scare me. Not with the basement of black and me. Maybe a sentient dummy. Calling a creep. Boo, dudes! Welcome to another episode of Calling All Creeps. I am, of course, James Vanderbeek. I am here with. James Vanderbeek's friend in Dawson's Creek, Josh Joan. I don't want. Uh, I don't want to wait for this joke to be over. <laughs> <laughs> to call it a joke is generous. I think. Uh, I never. I was going to say Katie Holmes, but she's kind of a weirdo. Uh, anyway, let's let this die. How are you, Dave? I'm all right. It's just it is what it is, my man. All right. <laughs> That's what I say to anyone who asks how <laughs> I, I am. Am I right, dude? I I Bro. Uh, trepidatiously say it is what it is, my man. <laughs> exactly. But good stuff happened. Uh, a good friend of ours and uh, kind of like really rambunctious young man, a uh, big fan of the show, and got us really amped to get started. Adam just had a baby. Mm. He had a baby. Just had a little baby. Congratulations, friend of the pod, Adam. On your baby wow. that you did from your amazing you you I almost made us have to edit something but you some <laughs> you somethinged from your dick in, that's right into a love love you made love and then the mm -hmm. stork caught all that stuff you made from your wiener and turned it mm. into a baby yeah um, now you have as, a family as friend of the podcast Dave Mombert would say oh no I loved <laughs> right. <laughs> That's his his uh, stand in for the c word, Dave, which we don't use. So you 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 blasted a, a love rope, and now there's a beautiful young lady in the world from two beautiful people. So congratulations, you handsome little boy. This is a uh, we should write greeting cards because I would oh love maybe a congratulations on your love rope turning into a person. <laughs> rope is so grotesque, isn't it? Like, like it's that's what it's called. Love strand. Like, a, that would be better. A strand is better than a rope, I think. Affection shooter. <laughs> <laughs> you shot your affection. Oh. <laughs> I'm distracted. I'm distracted by my cat. Yeah, but this also, this, like, we always say it, but this book really is probably the, the most simplistic. Sure. We've, we're getting to back <clears throat> to what Goosebumps was about, I think, in the early ones. He's just... Yeah. He's just churning it out. It's simple. It's new, interesting. Follows its kind of like path, and that's yeah. it. And there's not is, much to say about it, right? And it's it doesn't challenge you. Not that many of them really do, <clears throat> but some of them have a a good bit of um, distraction. What's the word I'm looking for? Who cares? Big um, big farts. <laughs> big, it's big farts. He does. Some of big, them have loads of big farts. Yeah. yeah but this one, this one is you could you could see what's coming all along, right? Yeah. Like you knew eventually, like when he found the magic box, he'd bring it back. Whatever. We'll get to the plot. There's no Dave, I, twists or turns. It's basically no, like no. it's just like a slow, like a road with two speed bumps. Like you see exactly what's right. coming. It's well lit, and there's a rabbit at the end. Yeah, the end could is the twist, I guess. But um, like all Goosebump books, it does not last very long. Dave, I I, I texted you. I have a I have a, a story to tell you about uh, the past couple weeks. I'm excited to hear about it. I wanted to tell everybody the name of the book and get into the book, no. um, but I'm not. Uh, fuck that. So what? How was it? <laughs> how was your weeks? 
<laughs> oh, baby. Well, past couple weeks have been weird. Uh, we had uh, uh, Hurricane Isaiah, right? Is that that was the name? No, I think it was something cooler. It was like I like it was Isaiah. Something, something I don't know. It was it was bad though. Um, the weird thing is it it didn't last particularly long, so it was like a hurricane version of me. Um, but it it uh, <laughs> it did a lot of damage. Sure did. So we lost power. I know you lost power as well. A a, a large chunk of New Jersey lost mm-hmm. power for an extended period of time. I was so which was a frustrating debacle. I was so excited because I actually got to stay home, which never happens. Like they'll be like, "Yep, you right. come to work. It's a snowstorm. Fuck you." But we yeah. actually got to stay home, and the Islanders game was at noon, and I was so excited. And you know, like they have to do the national anthems of Canada and America and sure. uh, Hockey Town, which is a short but beautiful uh, song. And there's a song called Hockey Town. No, I mean I don't know what oh, I'm saying right. anymore. But literally, <laughs> like they drop the puck, and it's like and hockey, and it's like. Doo. And my power oh, goes off, shit. and then it doesn't come back for days. But what? That's that's my story. What's what about you? That sucks. Yeah, so I, I live nearby to family. So, I, I mean, I work from home as a rule now, so I, I had I needed Wi-Fi. So I, I went to various parents and stuff, but it was a fucking pain in the ass. Like, I had to go to my mom's, and I brought my cat, which every time I put him in the carrier, he screams. It, it's, like, such a mess. I have to, like, tackle him to put him in there. It's a nightmare. Um, but it's fine. You know, on the scale of problems, fine. Then this past week... I had a few doctor's appointments, and let me tell you a little bit about my health. Oh, damn. I know where this is going. Yes. To circumcision. What? No. Is that what that is? No. I thought it was... I I was putting fingers up because I imagined, as we are both over 30, something I've been waiting for is somebody's going to stick something in my butt. (laughs) Tickle your prostate? Well, just wait, Dave, because maybe that happens. Oh, man. Uh, (laughs) <laughs> the, first, the first thing is I've I've been getting these horrendous headaches where like there's a <clears throat> there's an aura that creeps in from my periphery and it's like a white aura and I like can't see for a bit in the onset and then I get a horrendous headache which has made me vomit before and it doesn't happen a lot but it it was concerning to vomit from a headache. So I went to the doctor and they said I should get an MRI to make sure there are no tumors and whatnot. Um, so that's what I did. And and it had been so long since I had an MRI. Have you had an MRI, Dave? Oh, yeah. I love them. <laughs> you love them? Yeah. I Do go you genuinely? Right, uh, yeah. It's like, the, it's like living inside of a white noise machine and I just take a nice nap every time. Wow. That's great. I love them. I, it had been about seven years for me. Well, you're claustrophobic and- too. I'm a bit claustrophobic, so I I went in there and he was he, there was a, a nice uh, attendant there, a nurse, and he, uh, you know, he he was great and he did his job, but but he was going very quickly, and so he's like, all right, put you in this thing, put the thing over your face, put the foam things by the sides. Your your head is completely encased in paraphernalia. Yeah, it's so comfortable. <laughs> On. <laughs> On a, in addition to that, now in the world we're living in, <clears throat> one needs a mask. So I'm also wearing a mask. Oh, that's so my my basically it feels like you're choking on dirt already before you enter the digital coffin. So <laughs> I I I had it had been so long. I was like, I know it's like the ceiling of this machine is close to your face when you're put in there. I just I forget how close it is. So he was like rushing me in there and he was like, here you go, off you go. And I was like, I just need a minute to like mentally prepare myself, I told him. So he was very nice, very accommodating, gave me some time. And I was like, all right, cool, I'm chill. I'm going to go in there, give me the little thing to squeeze just so I feel better. And uh, like the call button or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, didn't use it, but you know it was it fucking sucked. And I I had to get the contrast as well, so I, I had to take me out, put something in my veins, stick me back in. Um, I listened to rock and roll music in there, Dave. You ever listen to music in there? I was gonna bring something up. Uh, I went in once um, after a car accident when that exterminator truck tried to kill me and right. failed. Bad exterminator, but I remember that. Uh, they were like, yeah, do you want to listen to any music? We have, like, a bunch of CDs, but, like, we can put on a, a Pandora or something. 
and I was like looking at the CDs and you know when like you there's something you've seen so many times in your life you're like oh I know that yeah immediately the neon green of just the spine of Chumbawamba's Tub Thumper. <laughs> and I was like, is that Baby. Tub Thumper? So I uh, went and got an MRI and fell asleep to the entire album. Probably around Drip, 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 I think I, I passed out. Sure, Maybe yeah. Good Ship Lifestyle, but yeah. Okay. The gentle, uh, you know, uh, yeah. British uh, half ska, half... <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> 90s old turn to the chumble one, but I, I went right to bed. So like, like a whiskey drink and a lager drink. Yeah. You went, you went right out. It was the songs that reminded me of the good times. <laughs> but what did you listen to? The songs that remind you of the better times. Yeah. I mean, so they have like serious XM or some shit. And, and he was like, it kind of sucks. Cause he was like, like what genre do you like? And what do you say? Right. It's like, so he listed the genres I and s- I just, Oh, I just said rock, but it was like, uh, first of all, I should have picked jazz. That was a rookie move. But the rock was like, I don't know, like 70s horn rock or something. It was like what? strange. Like it it had like a lot of like keyboards and horns and stuff. It was like very Steely Dan, but not as cool. It was not good. It was like Steely Dan meets like, I don't know, like a Moby <laughs> or something. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, Because once you said that, uh, I can only think of... Wait, is that Moby where it's like, he's going the distance. He's going for speed. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I know he makes insane songs. Yeah. He's an insane man. We're all made of stars. Anyway, so... uh, Yeah, and then I I came out to um, Queen's uh, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Ew. Um, Yeah. So, uh, So that... Whatever. That was fine. Who cares? I just described an MRI. I took five minutes of everybody's time. Um... The the other thing that's going on with me, Dave, and I, <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> I want to speak to this because look, I think we got to normalize butt stuff, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, so so I was I was uh, you know in the restroom <laughs> last weekend, <laughs> okay, <laughs> and uh, you know I had a little discomfort. And uh, have you ever had a hemorrhoid, Dave? I have not. Okay, I've had I had a hemorrhoid a couple of years ago. Wait, on your coolie? <laughs> on my cool. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, check your coolies because because you want to keep them nice and healthy. You don't want to lift something too heavy or strain too hard on the pot because uh, right. that could cause a hemorrhoid. So yeah, I had a hemorrhoid uh, and it sucked and it was horrible. So I was like, all right, this this is probably. Uh, another hemorrhoid but you know what i'm gonna go to the to the gi doctor and I, i'm just gonna confirm and uh, so i went there and i described what was going on and uh, he put it very eloquently he said well is it like pooping out a cactus and i said yes it is in many ways like pooping out a cactus <laughs> man why didn't uh, i become a butt doctor i could be like <laughs> is it like your stinky butt is pooping out one of those po- prickly desert guys <laughs> Now, how are your mud pies? <laughs> yeah. uh, well, so, let me see that stink hole. <laughs> I'm a now, doctor. Wink it. Wink it. <laughs> uh, so, and wink um, and wink <laughs> and wink. <laughs> Set it to music. <laughs> There's a shelf of just butt plugs. In my <laughs> in my in my in wink, it would be like the song playing would be like what a feeling. <laughs> <It's> like and <laughs> wink and wink when to the beat. Believing <laughs> and I'm dancing with my life. Yeah. Uh. So <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, what had to happen? If you have butt discomfort and you want to confirm what's going on with your hole. Um, what will happen is you have to show the doctor your hole. And uh, <laughs> so to do this, you take off your bottoms. There's a, they give you a, like a blanket made out of paper and you wrap it around yourself and you lay on your side. And then he comes in and like a browser's porn, he tears open the paper <laughs> <laughs> at your ass and uh, proceeds to gel it up. <laughs> and then he he sticks a big old digit in there, his middle, the longest finger. Yeah, in and, a way, uh, in a way, silently saying "fuck your ass." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's giving Quite your ass literally. the middle finger. 
quite literally fucking my ass, um, which is <laughs> fine. Like I, I, that's what I came there for, frankly. Well, and, I uh, didn't know that you. Uh, oh yeah, I don't want to get bleeped out, but I, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know what? that you <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I didn't want to get milked, right? <laughs> <clears throat> but okay. I, I I did want to just confirm what was going on in there. It right after the finger, he all he used a, a, a device <laughs> called an anuscope. Now, an anuscope goes in your asshole uh, <laughs> about an inch, maybe a little more, and then it's sort of a funnel. So the doctor can look in with a light and go, ah, I see the problem. No, no, wait. Like, it's not like a, like a computer thing. Like, literally, he opens up your ass like he a, like a mechanic ass. and peeks yes. in with his... And, and says, ah, I see the problem. He turns the flashlight on his iPhone and peeks into your butt. <laughs> and I heard a bunch of shutter clicks. Yeah. <laughs> <I was like, laughs> and the bats uh, flew out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he, he put in the anuscope. And uh, it turns out I have an anal fissure. Hmm. What does that mean? Uh, it means that's that was my question. Uh, it's it's a tear in your asshole lining. Cause you poop so good. I, I guess so. You poop with I was such like, vigor and intensity. I was like, how does one get a, a fissure? And he didn't really answer me, so I looked it up when I got home. And it's it could be like hard BMs, nice, or uh, like anal play, you know, dangerous anal play. Nicer, just, yeah. If you're just kind of like, you know, yo, listen, it's kind living of like, it up down there. It's kind of like a car. You don't want like the weather to destroy it. If you want to destroy it, destroy it having fun. Go off some jumps, man. If you're gonna yeah. get your butt destroyed, do some do some butt stunts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, lube it up, do some butt stunts. Lube, lube, lube. That's what I have to say. Okay. But anyway, so I haven't gotten to the best part. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, because so, this sounds real good so far. This is real good, and it's great content. So uh, <clears throat> I have a cut in my up my butthole. And uh, <laughs> through. That's what it's going to say on like, the back of like, it's like, Matt Ryan, I have a cut up my butthole. <laughs> <laughs> New York yeah, Times that's, that's says, my pull quote. "Yeah, uh, yeah, we're gonna win like a Webby for this. Uh, so <laughs> that's gonna be Brian's meme he makes for us. <laughs> Absolutely, I, it will. I have a cut up my butthole. I mean, now it might not be because we we called it out. He he might, uh, you know, switch it up on us. He's too avant garde. Yeah, right. And that's what we appreciate about his art. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So, um, <clears throat> but before I leave, actually, he gives me a cream." And he says, okay, cool, no problem. Like, this happens all the time, very common. <clears throat> Just uh, apply this cream in your asshole. Uh, in your asshole? In my asshole. Because the cut is in my asshole. I have to put the cream on the cut, which yeah, is in my asshole. I can't. I guess you can't just like Kirby, like woo, like suck it up into that. No, <laughs> yeah. You got to apply. Great. You Actually, put on I, a, a cotton I purchased... Swab. Well, I, I've been using Q-tips, but <clears throat> I purchased, um, they have gloves for your fingers, finger condoms. Nice. So I'm just going to, I have to finger my asshole twice a day now. Now, for something <laughs> like this, <clears throat> how long do you, would you say this has to happen in order to, to get an effective result? Twice a day? Yeah. Twice a day for how long? Do you think? A week. Right. Yeah, a week, two weeks. Yeah. You know what's cool about oh, no. mine? What's wrong with yours? You broke it so good? And it, Well, no, it's small. He was like, oh, it's small. This was the, the thing. Was was The expectation was that like... <laughs> Were you like, dude, I said look at my asshole. Leave everything else alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, he looked at my balls and he was like, oh, no, they, those have to come off. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, they... He looked at my asshole, and, and the cut was very small. He said, this is very common, very small. I'll give you a cream. Three months, Dave. Holy shit. I have to finger my asshole twice a day for three months. So that's Doctor's like a, orders. 180 days of ass. 180 plays, ass plays. Yes. Now, granted, I, I would have done that anyway. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, that's how we got into this pickle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. A pickle would be a good vehicle for uh, delivery. Nice. Um, All I'm going to say is that your finger game is going to be <laughs> out of this world. 
Dude, I'm going to I'm going to know exactly where the prostate is. Well, we and maybe need- I will milk myself as a little treat. We may <laughs> We may, we need to normalize uh, weird genitalia and like undercarriage issues, undercarriage and that's what issues. this podcast is going to be about. We're going to get our own men. sticker, like magnet sticker, on your car. We're going to figure out what yeah. it is. Uh, yeah. Sarah McLaughlin's going to be like, "Give a dollar today for everyone who broke their butthole." <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I thought I had uh, ball cancer at one point, and they thought I had it, yeah. so I went for an ultrasound. Um, and it was an ultrasound on each one of my balls. Oh, man. So they need to so, put the warm jelly on your balls. Yes, the jelly. And they give you a um, like a towel, like a, like a washcloth to put over your junk. Because they're like, listen, we're going to touch your balls, but don't, I better not see that wiener. <laughs> and this, this elder lady who talked to me and spoke like, she understood everything, but she spoke kind of like broken English. She was Asian. Mm-hmm. She was like... You can tell, like, she, it's always, like, she was probably, like, a doctor in her country and came over, and she, like, knew her shit, and she was, like, the person handling everything there. So, yeah. like, I saw her outside, and she's, like, they're, like, the oh, doctor will be right in. It was, pra- it was her practice or something. She came in, and, like, when it's awkward, I can't just, like, sit there and make bad jokes. So, she starts, like, she, like, my balls have this warm stuff on it, and she's, like, yeah. rubbing the ultrasound, like fucking wand it's like the wii moat like she's put, like looking yeah. looking for wii sports on my scrot yeah. uh and all i said to her i said well is it a boy or a girl <laughs> <laughs> and she didn't even look at me she just stopped still staring away just stopped and then continued oh and no. then put it down and she said get dressed and walked away, and I never saw her again. Whoa! Uh oh. Listen, mm. I was just trying to have. I was just trying to make her have a fun day. Yeah. I didn't mm. actually think my balls were pregnant. <laughs> it's a good joke. You yeah. know, one time I had to have that same procedure, and instead of a towel, they gave me a starburst wrapper. <laughs> and they said this should be good. <laughs> I, I hope it wasn't yellow, because that's the worst flavor. <laughs> it was orange, second worst. <laughs> uh, no, I've I've never had that. Have you ever seen that uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm episode where Larry David's getting his ball shaved for surgery and he puts his arms behind his head like this, just to relax, sort of? And the nurse, it's like a thing. That's that's the I haven't the MacGuffin seen that episode. For that. <clears throat> yeah, and she's just like, don't don't do that, like <laughs> you know, because that's like the I don't know. Yeah, the, blo- the implication I guess. is it's a blowjob. But also, it's like you're like, yeah, do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I hate it. That. I, uh, I've, ha- I've had my balls shaved in the hospital before. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, la di da. Yeah, not to brag. My name is uh, Matt Balls Shaved at the Look, Hospital. This is, this is another bullet point in the list of reasons that nurses should make over $100,000 a year. Yeah. And especially now, too. Um, oh, yeah. With all absolutely. the shit they've dealt with. Just like, okay, so think about this. If you know anybody who works in the medical field, and this is something you have to do or you're not allowed to listen to our podcast anymore, which is probably better for you. But if you know anybody who works in the medical field after listening to this, just shoot them a text and thank them. Hell yeah. Just be like one of your people, one of somebody in your – like who you went into this to help people and had to like finger Matt's asshole. Yeah. Like, Absolutely. thank them, because they're not like, I can't wait to finger my asshole. I can't, like, think of the no. wind coming out of that cave he made when he opened that up. I don't Dude, let myself yeah. touch my butthole. Uh, and yeah. it's disturbing. It is. So Although, I know mean, normalize it. Normalize it, of course, because the thing is, all we have is our health. And even if you don't worry about yourself, I'm sure you have family people and other yeah. loved ones that care about you. Right? Hell yeah. yeah. I care about you, Matt. I care I about wa- you too, buddy. I'm worried about your broken butt. <laughs> I'm worried about it too, honestly. You know, I almost didn't go to this appointment because it started to feel better. Like, it feels better overall. So I was like, ah, like, I don't know if I should get up early and do this thing. But it turns out it's not at all what I thought. And, like, I have to be medicated for three months. So fucked up. I had to go to, like, a special pharmacy to get it too. The first pharmacy rejected me. I learned that chain pharmacies never create any kind of medication which like might be obvious like obviously medication comes from manufacturers yeah but they don't 
they don't compound anything. You have to go to a specific pharmacy that compounds and they will make stuff, in my case, custom for my butt. So your butthole has a special brew. It is a special brew. It was a downtown, actually I'm lucky because it's five minutes away, this mom and pop pharmacy. It was like stepping back in time. Uh, it was truly <laughs> insane, and uh, but but very nice, and uh, you know made me the compound, and now I put a Vaseline like substance in my asshole. They got out the mortar and pestle and started. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, they put, it, put uh, in like like Eye of Newt. And I stuff was gonna say that. Eye of Newt. <laughs> it's just like ah, oh, it needs more witch hazel in time. Yeah, and she was like, "Come over here, fart into it, fart it. It's your butt. You have to fart into it." <laughs> yeah. Uh, it has a ass patina now. Yeah. Oh, man. So I had two beers for this podcast, and I've gone through all of them now. We haven't even said the name of the book yet. <laughs> can you vamp for three seconds while I go and get another delicious of Genesee course. cream ale? Of course I can. So I will oh, say in this something. pharmacy, when I walked in, it's it's a mom and pop, which is great. And I, I should support them anyway. Um, but, you know. They tend to stock the shelves as needed, so it's a little sparse. In the back, there is a wooden sign hanging from the ceiling that said, like, uh, beauty center, beauty right. parlor or something. And there were mannequin heads with a series of wigs, just just wigs in the entire back of that store. It was wild, but very nice. And, uh, you know, they gave me my butt cream. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're back. Uh, this No, these are the notes for Night of the Living Dummy. Um, all right. This book is called Bad, Bad Hair, Day. Hair Day. It is. You ever had one of those, Dave? Uh, every fucking day, my man. Me too, dude. Uh, you ever have a Bad Hair Day for your pubes? Uh, I usually keep them pretty, pretty uh, what is it, low and tight? I give them like a military yeah, haircut. Sure. A tight fade on them. <laughs> I just make sure to have my basketball number on the back of my balls. <laughs> I have a big star above my dick. Uh, all right, so it's Bad Hair Day. It is the book with a fucked up looking bunny on the front. It tells us to watch Goosebumps on Fox Kids TV, which would be neat because you would see um, a well-known comedian from Whose Line Is It Anyway who had an uncredited cameo. That's right, Whoa. Colin... Colin Mockery is in this episode. His last name is Mockery? Colin Mockery? Do you you yeah. don't know Colin Mockery? No. Do you know Colin? You ever watched uh Who's on Is It Anyway? No. Oh. I I know like so, like some of the faces in that show. Like I've seen like clips and stuff. He's the but... bald guy. <clears throat> okay. There's like the two main ones. There's like Ryan and Colin. Mm-hmm. Ryan is the tall skinny one who I right. think was on the Drew Carey <laughs> show. Right. He was like their Kramer, I think. And then, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, Colin was the short, bald guy who was funny. But anyway, uh, this was March of 1996. The song was finally ended one sweet day by uh, Boys to Men. And, you know, we've been doing that every episode. But New Star is Risen with Because You Loved Me by Celine Dion. Oh, beautiful song. It's a beautiful song. I think it's going to be played at my funeral. Uh no, I just, you know, I always switch what song's going to be played at my funeral, and I finally figured it out. I was trying to figure, like, what is the funniest song to have my, like, casket lowered down to? <laughs> so uh-huh. I, I, want, I want all church music and shit, like, all generic, like, whatever they play at the funeral home stuff. Standard. But, like, I want a very normal funeral. But then, once they lower me down, I want California Girls by Katy Perry. Because <laughs> it... It played at Dunkin' Donuts today, and it was just like, California girls. <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> it's so, and then, like, I was it's like, well, this song's kind of funny. And then, like, Snoop Dogg did his verse, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> that's good. She says they're undeniable, which should be like, California girls, I guess. And someone's like, hey, don't deny them. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but they're anyway. Nerve. So, uh, uh, yeah. Wait, do you want to be uh, buried or or cremated? I want to be cremated, but for this joke, I need to be buried. <laughs> yeah. Like, literally. I, this does need, make me think there are a lot of possibilities with a coffin. Also, I don't want a top on my coffin. <laughs> it's too scene. claustrophobic. No, but, like, it's just, you see me dead lowering. And it's like, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I, 
if if you die before me, and I hope you'll do the same courtesy for me, yeah, we'll insist that each other's families, uh, when we're buried and we're lowered into the ground, make sure at the bottom there's a series. I would probably have to be like twenty on either side, just whoopee cushions. <laughs> 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 so as we're lowered, it's just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Finally, when we reach the bottom, big symphony fart noise. It, it slowly fades out, so it's like Daisy Dukes, but he's on Exactly, and then I'll blow an air horn. <laughs> this is a podcast about goosebumps. Um. <laughs> The movie was The Birdcage. It was uh, number one for most the most weeks out of any other movie at four weeks in the entire year of 1996, starring Robin Williams, Nathan Lane, Gene Hackman, and Diane West. That's a 90s cast if I ever heard one. I'd say so. On March 16th, Mike Tyson KOs Frank Bruno in the third round and became the heavyweight championship. All right. And he's uh, about to fight again soon. I heard that. Can't wait. Did you see him training? That guy's a fucking monster. I know. He looks like a beast. Yeah. Still. He would punch me in the face, and my butthole would be broken worse than yours. <laughs> <laughs> my head would just fly off. Yeah. Uh, on March 24th, the MTA raised the New York City bridge tolls. Okay. Which, I don't know if you've driven into the city anytime recently. I never will again. Uh-huh. Yeah. Go on. But guess how much it was in 1996, and people were pissed that they raised it to three fifty. Oh, three fifty. 50 Jesus. $3.50. Yeah. And the now last... it's like $20 or something? It's close. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on March 29th, this was some interesting uh, f- sports news. And as a jock who does a lot of push-ups, I knew this was super interesting for my calisthenics. And uh, Absolutely. Hey, uh, drop the talcum powder for once in your fucking life. Uh, on March 29th, the Cleveland Browns uh, <laughs> changed their name to the Baltimore Ravens and moved. Okay. And I thought that was weird because the Cleveland Browns still exist. But apparently they got sued or something, and they retained the rights, and the Cleveland Browns came back in 1998 as an expansion team. Okay. Yeah. This is football, right? It's football. Okay. (laughs) All right, and that's all the shit that happened. All we need to know about this book is that Amazo, who is a magician, appears later as a magic performer in the 13th Goosebumps Series 2000 book called Return to Horrorland. Uh... The, and the good, good, good Colin Mockery thing I said is also neat. But other than that, fuck this book. Tim Swanson does sure. magic. Yep. You want to take it from there? Sure. I read the first two chapters two weeks ago. Same. Uh, so they are a blur to me. But I believe he has a sister named Ginny, uh, who, of course, right? Every single fucking character in the Goosebumps universe has an annoying little sister or brother. And... Uh, Ginny likes to flick him on the nose and say boy yoing which is actually very funny. It is, because his nose <clears throat> looks like a sausage or some shit, they say. Yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, genuinely, I don't know. Like, he, he, he does some magic, I know, in those first two chapters, but it is not good. Uh, and uh, he really loves Amazo, which is his idol, magician. Mm-hmm. It's just a boy who wants to be a magician, and his little sister, uh, a kind of a weird... Weird detail. Ginny does karate. <clears throat> yes, that's right. And she karate an, chopping everything. Yeah, she was an annoying sister, but like he really wants to do magic, but like mom and dad won't put any money towards it because yeah. they're like, listen, that's bullshit. Yeah. Uh, but Ginny does karate because mom and dad think that all women should have to be able to defend themselves in this world. That is true. And <clears throat> uh, the power goes to her head, and at one point she threatens to kick his ass she's like i'll do this to you and fucking dents the refrigerator with a karate chop i think i made a note of that here yeah that is insane yeah Ginny is obsessed with karate chopping i also wrote that the uh she uses a karate voice a lot which i i can't tell if that's problematic or not Um, i feel like it might be i gotta say this you you remember when we were reading uh the book a little bit and you said that it was the first borat impression of Goosebumps? The first book? No, the uh, the shitty one we just read, The Night Howler. Oh, sure. Yeah. 
lied. This has the first one. Because on page five, there's the first Borat impression in any Goosebumps book. Which is oh. insane because this is way before Go- uh, Borat even came out. Because <laughs> it says, uh, go ahead, she taunted. But if you do, I'll give you the freezer chop. She waved her arms through the air, making those weird karate noises. Wah, wah, wee, wah. <laughs> Right to the neck. Read it. Right. It says it. In I italics. Know. It does. It says wah wah we ah. Wah wah we ah. Which is I'm pretty sure how um lead writer of Borat wrote Borat with this. It's, yeah. Doesn't Borat say that? Isn't he just like wah wah we wah? Oh, I I truly haven't seen it since two thousand seven where it, it in the grave of that year where it belongs. Well, in our next podcast, we'll just, I want to make a criterion collection of my own where it's like, yeah, we're going to watch Borat and then uh, Austin, Austin Powers. Powers and oh then, my God, uh, we're so in sync. <laughs> Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then Juno. Sh- Shrek, Juno. Shrek. All those uh, movies that you watched once and you, at that time you were like, this might be my favorite movie. Yeah. Then like three weeks later, you're like, this needs to stay at this time and it needs to die here. Yeah. I remember really liking Juno. I remember like in Garden State, and now I'm oh, like, oh yeah, Whoa, Zach Braff is a fucking perv. <laughs> yeah, he's like a fucking Brita filter. Fuck him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like, he thinks he's going to combat his sister's karate with magic. He's yeah. like, well, if I become a good enough magician, I can turn her into a rabbit, and she can't karate chop me. Yeah, he keeps threatening to excuse me. I'm yawning. It's late, Dave. Um, he keeps uh, threatening to turn her into a rabbit. He says, I swear to fucking God, tonight I'm going to turn you into a fucking rabbit. You'll see. It's like an, it's an insane thing to say, of course. But anyway, in the beginning of the book, I do remember they go to a magic shop. He has a friend named Foz. Who rules? Yeah, weird, weird. <laughs> but yeah, he rules. Well, his name is Foster. Right. So they're like, they call him Foz. Because if you were like, hello, Foster, like that's yeah. weird. Yeah, that's like bananas Foster. Yeah. Foster the people. Uh, but when they walk in there, Jody like, Foster. Lit- <laughs> literally, uh, Uncle Fester, uh, yes, they, that's right. they get into, the, the magic shop guy pretends that he got stabbed with a sword. Swords, you know, uh, how you rob a magic store. And mm-hmm. then they're like, oh, you, you got me. But then, like, fucking Foz pretends to get his arm cut off with, uh, like, uh, a guillotine? Yes. But and it's he's a like, fake. Uh, yeah, it's a fake. It's a fake a teen. And uh, mm-hmm. then he's like, well, you kids need to fucking buy something. I'm going out of business. But here's free tickets because Amazo is playing at a nightclub in town. Right. A, a nightclub that was in a haunted building that like a lady died in. Yeah. It's like an old house where a, a lady lived. A uh, mansion, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> Midnight um, mansion, they call it. And then he's still doing tricks. He try he like Foz gets his sister's rabbit and it runs away and he does a bad magic trick. And Ginny always fucks up his magic show. She's always yeah, like, uh, she's there to sabotage. Yeah. And it just sucks. And uh, mom and dad are like, you can't go to a nightclub at a haunted mansion at right. 10 o'clock on a school night. Because you're 12. I don't, I wouldn't, I'm 33. 33 and uh i wouldn't fucking go out at 10 p.m are you crazy i would because it's riding distance of a bike so if i could get there really fast and be able to get home in time i'm cool with it but at the yeah, same time if it's, if it's something i love and it's very close like that where i could walk or ride a bike that's a possibility but hopefully i'm in bed the cops try to stop them oh yeah Ginny catches them leaving and she says you have to take me Foz mm-hmm. can't go because it's like his mom's birthday and he can't get out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're young. You don't appreciate your parents. <clears throat> then no. oh, I got beer in my throat. Um, they go to the show and like fucking Amazo like leans down. They sneak in. They're like, our parents are parking the car and they get like a fucking club thing up front. And they're like, two drink minimum. Ginny just gets fucking sauced. Dude, she throws them back. She really does. It's crazy. She's just like, give me what karate guys drink. And they're like, all right. Mm. So they gave her a bunch of uh, k- karate r- rums. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And she's just doing backflips. And then Amazing you know, gets on the stage and says, you're going to fucking disappear, little boy. 
<laughs> and and uh, Ginny's still at the bar. And you know what they do is they they take um, nunchucks and they put them in a blender and they just put it on puree. <laughs> and they just pour that shit right into a glass. Um, I actually heard that a lot of people, they don't make that drink anymore because so many people died because they didn't put the lid on. Oh, uh, yeah, that's 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 right. And they got beaten to death by the nunchucks. Yeah. It's crazy because the drink is called karate juice, but the death is called the Michelangelo. That's right. That's right. I forgot about that. After the ninja turtle. Yep. Heard of him. Uh, so they see it, and then it's like not threatening that he's going to make him disappear. It's just that he wants him to be in the show. Yeah. So he goes into a box and gets shot down into like a basement. Yeah. And uh, Amazo doesn't even come to get him. He just like sits... No in that little dumpster so there's like a hundred chapters where he's just sitting alone contemplating his mistakes <laughs> yeah yeah and uh he <laughs> breaks down the door and goes over to amazo's like room thinking he's like amazo's gonna be like you're such a good disappearing kid and i love yeah. you and you are you should be my best friend now we should go on tour and amazo's just like fuck off punk <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> Uh, but he doesn't actually see him. He just kind of hears the voice, and then um, he gets mad at that because here's my idol, and I've been spurned, and uh, almost had to bleep that. And uh, he takes his magic kit. So Amazo's got his magic kit sitting out there, and he, this kid just fucking takes it. I and mean, if somebody was rude to me, I'm trying to think who like my idol is. Like, I'm trying to think of like celebrities or anyone that I really, really look up to. Yeah, there's like Kurt Russell. Uh, uh-huh. well, the big show we love. Big show. So if, if the big show was just like "fuck you, Dave," but he would be like "fuck you, Dave," <laughs> yeah. and I like ran away with his best singlet. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh, I told you my Dave Bazan story, right? Where he told me to be quiet. No, <laughs> it's, it's. I mean, but he was he was nice to me. It was because I was I was being a fucking idiot. I was 18, and I was at a venue that no longer exists. Well, it exists, but it's bad now in Hoboken Maxwell's. This was 2005. And David it has Bazan, the same name, but it's not the same place. It's not yeah. the same place. No. Uh, but Dave Bazan was playing an acoustic show there. And I, at this point had only been to a few shows like that. Um, like two shows like that. The rest were like arena rock shows. And even then I'm young. It, it, I hadn't been to many. So I was just singing my little heart out. And uh, <laughs> it's an acoustic show, dude. You can't, you can't do. I mean, you can, but like, be respectful. Uh, so he leaned down, and he was like, "Hey, uh, whoever's singing over here, could you just like keep it down? Because it's um, I, I'm having trouble. Like, he was having trouble like staying in key. They was throwing him off. He was very said it very nicely, but I was <laughs> mortified. <laughs> that was a that was a catalyst that changed me a little bit. Not too much, because I've now reached a point where I have no impulse to go talk to these people that I admire. It's just gone. But but over the past like 15 years, that was a strong impulse. So I've done all kinds of shit to embarrass myself in front of people I love. Well, we talked to R.L. Stein because we saw him yell, fuck you at a baby. So Yeah, that's true. <laughs> And what R.L. Stein says is that, uh, you know, he looks in the window. By the way, there was a rabbit in the act. He does, like, the most basic fucking magic tricks. He's this kid's hero, but he does, like... what are His magic tricks are, like, he pulls, like, a tablecloth out from under a rabbit and, like, a vase, and it do- the both don't fall. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, like, I get it. Uh, what else does he do? He, does, he like, eats a Twinkie in one bite. Okay. <laughs> That's a good trick, though. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. He beat all of Ninja Gaiden with one life on yeah, NES. It was right. insane. Uh, so, yeah, he he's like, fuck him. He's a piece of shit, and that's why it's okay that I robbed him. Yep. And G- But he, Ginny's outside to be like, where have you been? And he's like, yeah. we need to go because he gave me this, and he was so nice to me. And they're like, is that why the fucking like, security guards are looking for they're you? They're literally being chased. So the deal is... They both own it now because um, if they don't, if, if, if he doesn't share it with Ginny, she's going to tell mom and dad mm-hmm. and also karate him. So they keep it in the <laughs> attic and they're going to share it. Yeah, but he gives it a little peek uh, <laughs> at one point and, and Ginny gets mad and tells mom, but mom doesn't hear it conveniently. Well, he almost fucks up because he goes up and puts on his jacket and yeah. there's a magic trick in his jacket. Which, oh, that's right. 
It's the jacket of infinite snakes. <laughs> yeah, remember that old that old bag of tricks. He puts the, on the, a jacket and like infinite snakes just start coming out of it forever. Yeah. He's just producing snakes and he thinks they're real, but they're actually mechanical. It's it doesn't matter. But like then no. Foz comes over and they go up and they look at it and he's like, "We could go through it, or I could show it to you." And he tries yeah. to like Matt do all the magic tricks. He like. But they all kind of go wrong. Like, he tries to get a mm-hmm. billion, like, uh, handkerchiefs to come out of the wand, but they start coming out of his dick hole. <laughs> That's right. I remember. And, yeah, it's insane. And yeah, it doesn't he's, work. He's like, uh, now I'm going to try on the jacket again. But the 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 jacket now has two cutouts where his nipples are, and cottage <laughs> cheese is coming out. And he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. And they're like, and oh, it stinks. It stinks. Oh, we forgot about Amazo's time as an adult comedian. Uh, yeah, that's right. But, like, literally, he tries to do, like, the the shell and ball trick, which I thought was only for, like, you know, like, I don't know, people gambling on the streets of Agrabah. (laughs) (laughs) That's right, yeah. That was Aladdin's favorite game. He's like, I've been palming the ball, but a new ball shows up all the time. And then it just started making infinite balls. Yeah, basically all of these things, um, like, he tries the, the rabbit and the hat, Situ- or the doves in the hat or whatever everything he touches like it it endlessly produces itself and replicates itself so there's like an attic filled with these red balls there's countless doves uh snakes come back yeah um and so like and they just like leave it that way and go outside um and uh Ginny takes a bite of a carrot because she's very hungry but it's a magic carrot and now she's a rabbit yeah whoops but she could still do karate yeah, she's she's tub thumping all over the place with her little feet. <laughs> so and they have to go back to the magic mansion place to yeah. see him, but it's closed. But they go in anyway, and then yeah. they go downstairs, and they realize that Amazo was a rabbit the whole time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, there's a dummy there that that uh, the rabbit made somehow. Yeah, um, he's like, yeah, I made him with my rabbit hands <laughs> to look like a man, <laughs> yeah. and uh, that's that also that's what you're seeing when you go to see him and you're like, Oh, that's a man, not a dummy. Yeah. And they made it so good that like, I realistically, uh, he probably just went on to some like weird European website and just made a sex doll of himself and got it delivered. Absolutely ordered a real doll, which is crazy that the whole, it makes sense. Cause they said the whole time during his act, he was just going, Oh, cause his mouth, <laughs> Was forever in a blowjob <laughs> position. <laughs> it was an O of surprise. <laughs> By the way, a sexy thing that he made this dummy do. One of one of Amazo's tricks on the stage. I forgot about this. I wrote all the ladies swooned, which didn't happen in the book. But he was like, isn't it so hard to thread a needle? And he like filled his mouth with needles and That's then... Right put a thread in his mouth and pulled out every needle on the thread. And he's like, he did it all with his tongue. And I was like, this guy's cunnilingus his champ. 1996 <laughs> cunnilingus his world record holder. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of WAPs in there. Yeah. We learned what the O in Amazo stood for. Yeah, for sure. Origami. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. So he, they basically go and they're in. He's like, I said, fuck off punk. And then they walk in, and they're like, you're a puppet. And he's like, no, I'm a rabbit. And he's very rude to them. Yeah, he's an asshole. He's like, sorry, I'm mad because I'm a rabbit. (laughs) And uh, it turns out a sorcerer made him a rabbit. But he can't turn himself back because he's just a lowly magician. He hasn't been promoted to sorcerer yet. And what's the, like, magician's name? It's like a sorcerer. He's like, the sorcerer's name is Frank. I think think it was Frank. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because this is where he says, like, your name is Foz and you're making fun of Frank, which I thought was nice. Um, But, uh, yeah, that's kind of it. And then uh, the rabbit says, like, hey, Tim, right? That's our main character's name. Did we say it, Tim? Tim Swanson. Yeah, Tim, uh, you were good in the magic act. Do you want to be my assistant instead of this dummy? And he's like, sure. And then the last chapter is from the POV of Tim being a rabbit now, not himself. But he's so excited because his whole life he wanted to be on the stage, the star of the magic. Yeah. But it doesn't really make too much sense because he's like, I want to retire, so could we do this? And, like, you're a magician. 
that is stuck as a rabbit and you want somebody to switch with you. So instead of making them an actual magician, you just make them also a rabbit. Yeah. Also, Ginny, apparently the magic carrot just wears off and has nothing to do with the original right. sorcerer trick. Yep. It just, it doesn't really make sense that like, I don't know, Frank would be like, you're a rabbit forever, but also here's a carrot that does that to other people. Yeah. Keep it with your bag of tricks. And also infinite balls. <laughs> <laughs> so that's something. And that's the entire book. That's it. Uh, what, what did you think was good about this book, Dave? Uh, I liked in the beginning when he was trying to find his own name, and he's like, Amazo is the main magician. He wants to call himself Swanzo, and his friends say that it sounds like a laundry detergent. <laughs> it does, yeah. That, that was good. I like the Borat. Uh, <laughs> the Borat. I also liked... Um, they said... Uh, Amazo, when he was on stage, he said, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. He crooned. Mm. which I thought was a really cool vocab word. And it, it said a lot towards like what was going on and set a nice scene. It was cool. A lot of good language in the act, um, the Mezo act. And then on 83, he said, uh, those balls are coming out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, Tim had a vasectomy. That's canon. So it's that's fine. not correct. What, what you like? What was good? Um, I just have some miscellaneous notes. So I did think boy oing classically, that's a boner noise. So that's funny. Yeah. Um, chapter one, I don't know if this was good, but it was the longest in Goosebumps history so far. Did you notice that? It's like 10 pages long. What do you mean? Oh, the, first, the first chapter. chapter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First chapter. It's like long. a tenth of the book. Yeah, but there's a lot of tiny ones. Later, and this is also, I just want to say, we underestimated this book. Well, you can tell we talked about Matt's butthole for more than we talked about this book. Yeah, that went on a little long. I might edit some of that. No, 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 it's fine because this book is very, this is the shortest Goosebumps book yet, I think we've read. It's 112 yeah. pages. It's a spry 112. Well, is it 112 or 117? I, I think. think it's 117, but it, it's 117. Same shit. But the ending chapters are always like one and a quarter page. Right. And that's a lot of blank pages at the end. So, yeah. um, On page 22, he's doing his magic act. And he says, but first, wouldn't you like to see me pull a quarter out of Ginny's ear again? No, the kids yelled, boo. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was pretty good. That's pretty good. I like that. Um, there, on page 31, he's trying to sneak out of the house to go to the show. And he's like trying to do like a... Uh, he's he's trying to not have the floor creak like crazy, which is relatable to me when I was a little kid. I would try to sneak around being Same. undetected. Yeah. Um, but older house, you know. Um, and I think that's it. Uh, all right. So my bad. Um, I said the box exploded in his face. Yeah. I don't remember. There's, there's a bag... There's a bag or a box oh. from a mazo that makes it like a sound effect yeah. of an explosion. And somehow he thought that was like fire. That was it. I, very confusing. So like when he opened, when you open Ma a mazo's magic box, it yeah. makes an explosion sound. And every time he does that, people are like, oh my God, I thought I died because of an yeah. explosion. Very weird. Yeah. That's like, I don't know, hearing the sound of like. Like, imagine opening up a box and it goes, Moo, and it's like, holy fuck, I thought this was a cow. <laughs> yeah. It's very much like like on the 4th of July, like dogs hearing fireworks. And they're like, well, I'm going to be put down now. Like, life's yeah. over. It's like, no, it's a firework. And but this it's, is the, <laughs> it's the apocalypse again. Fuck me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, infinite snake description is so repetitive. Like, literally from page 67 to page 72, every snake shows up and wraps around his leg. It's just like, I felt something on my back. A new snake showed up and wrapped around my leg. Yeah. But then my back tingled because a snake was on it and it wrapped around my leg. Like, he probably had, like, his fucking shoes laced with snakes at this point. Uh, on page 73... I'm turning the pages. That's why I'm doing uh, this. Harmonizing. Oh, yeah. We got this. It was uh, none of them... Oh, <clears throat> On page 73, he wrote, none of them is real. What the fuck? Which, yeah. Not good. 
When will I learn? I scolded myself. All of these things are just tricks. None of them is real. That is <laughs> grammatically incorrect. Shame on you, RLS. Shame on you, Scholastic. Mm, that should have been caught. Is real. I will say uh, on page 70, even though the, dis the description, the snake description is repetitive, it says it uses the descriptor crammed with snakes, which is very <laughs> funny. Just like my butthole. <laughs> yeah. Well, be careful. Don't get a fissure. My butthole is crammed with bees. <laughs> I uh, I hated the part two on page 77 where, like, for no reason, Ginny's just like, Mom, we have a secret. Right. And and she's like, what's the secret? And then he was like, no. She said that we have we want a wee pet. Yeah. Scottish. Like, why, would, why would she say it's a wee pet? And she's like, because she's studying Scottish language. Yeah. Which the is... fuck? <laughs> it, it's <laughs> yeah. nothing. All of that, it's like two, three pages of just nothing. Yeah. It's just supposed to be clever, and it just isn't. No. You go. I go. Well, uh, of course, the problematic karate voice. Um, wah, wah, wee, wah. I think, <laughs> I think this is the book I can say pretty confidently where every single chapter ends with a question like uh, to himself, like, would I get away with it? Sneaking out to the, <laughs> like, it, it's that seriously, truly every chapter. I don't like that. It's not good. That's his attempt to end on a cliffhanger when there is none. Um, page 97. Uh, it's like a windy night and the wind is so strong that Foz falls over. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why? I, there's like hurricane force winds all of a sudden. Well, Foz is basically a flat Stanley of a boy. Mm, that's true. So it makes sense. It tracks. Um, oh, I should have had this in my good. Uh, on page 108, Foz suggests just leaving Ginny as a rabbit. They're like, he's... <laughs> Tim is panicking. He's like, what the fuck do we do? Like, what? Like, my parents are going to kill me. My sister's a rabbit now, and I did it. And he's just like, why don't you just, like, send her into the woods? Like, <laughs> just, <laughs> you just don't have a sister anymore. Tell him that yeah, she dude. ran away. Just hope a good dang old coyote comes and just fucking murders <laughs> yeah. her. Uh, maybe we could hire somebody who is, like, uh, has hawks, and they could swoop down. Um, yeah, I think that's that's... Yeah, I mean, you know, I think just in a in a general way, not a great book, but down the middle. I say it's right down the middle. It's yeah. not the worst book. It's not the best book. This is a Goosebumps book. Yeah. If this was one of the early ones, I'd be like, I expected this. Yeah. And we'd have more to say because we haven't dealt with this shit over and over again. Right. Also, your butthole was healthier when we started. That's right. And now look where I am. It's because of age. Because I tried to store all those magic tricks in there. But... Also, I need to say, just because you overshared, um, I poop twice every morning now. Oh, dude. Now that I'm working from home especially, I'm on the toilet constantly. No, but now I go I go to work, and I do one at work, one at home, then I have my first coffee and one at work. Yeah. Well, coffee and will get things started for you, Yeah, too. but they're both full loads. <laughs> dude, I, I, I remember tell you. when I was younger... Uh, I remember my mom had to get a colonoscopy and they give you that drink to, to evacuate yourself completely. And I remember it's just, you know how like certain things people in general, but especially your parents say to you, they kind of just stick in your mind for no reason at all. But yeah, I remember yeah. her like coming out of the bathroom and telling me like, she was like, when people say you're full of shit, they're not kidding. And I, I was like, Oh, that's an interesting that way to think about it. Is fucking awesome. <laughs> That is something it was just so I constant. But the thing is, like, you just said that to me, and like, you will never forget that. I will never forget this moment about that moment. <laughs> you will never forget. And you're sharing this with like the hundred and forty people yeah. that at least listen to this on the first two weeks. That it's whatever. Tens of people. Um, tens of people might listen. To this. <laughs> Yeah, but it, you know, I think that the thing that I realized too is that it rings true. Like you are like never empty. Like I always think about that. Like everybody, it's like, oh, here comes like look at this, like on you know whatever this handsome guy. Oh man, look at the like Daniel Craig coming out of the fucking ocean and uh, Casino Royale. Guess what, baby? He's full of shit right now. <laughs> he's got a he's so got love, a load to to get rid of. 
Uh, my girlfriend and I are going through the Sopranos. This is my second time or first time, and a guy hangs himself at one point. Yikes! And uh, it's like it's like dramatic because they stick with it as he's hanging, and then uh, it's to sure. the point where he he's trying to like get like you know swing and pull from his neck. Yeah. And then when he finally goes limp, he just like the piss and everything uh, starts running from his leg. So that's a confirmation, right? You 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 piss and shit yourself when you die. They didn't have shit running down his leg, but mm. but it's just like you got to realize like all of that is, you know, we're just human bags of liquid. And yeah, we're shit disgusting. And piss and blood. I'm disgusting. Extra disgusting. It is. Anyway, it, we have what to. Was, it is a biological imperative that anyone is attracted to anyone, right? Like, like thank God for the chemicals and hormones, because like we're all so disgusting. Yeah, that's what the one thing too. If you're like. Uh, identify as a dude that and if, if you're weirded out by periods still and you're above the yeah, age of give what, me a fucking break 14 maybe just because no one's talked to you about it yet just fuck off dude come on yeah get real I hate just our bodies are fucking wild yeah they're they're terrible they're just progressively failing uh life is a nightmare and uh you know but we have goosebumps, uh, so so that's just good. be happy your dick works. Anyway, <laughs> spook and scare. Uh, I didn't even write one. I wrote none, um, so nothing scary well, happened. How about your best dressed? Um, I was gonna say originally it's Tim because he said my nose is long and curved at the end like a hot dog, <laughs> and my actually yeah it's gonna be Tim because this yeah. still counts. So it's going to be Tim with his hot dog nose while he's wearing the infinite snake jacket. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Hot dog nose and an infinite snake jacket. That's Come his on. scorpion jacket from Drive. Um, I know somebody who owns that jacket. Do you? And let me tell you, if anyone else wore it, I'd be like, mm, but him, I'm like, I, I love that you own the jacket. Look, it's so good. If you can pull it off, that's incredible. So he lives in the desert, literally. So the times he needs a jacket is few and far between. Right. And just that that is the only jacket he owns is perfect. Yeah. Love um, him. You know who you are if you're listening to this. I love you. Does his name start with an F? It sure does. Hell yeah. That's right. Um, his name is... He and I have the same shirt right now. Farbo. I want that shirt. It's great. Look, so if Black Sabbath's ex- putting out a progressive shirt where all the money goes to uh, BLM, I'm all for it. Also, um, speaking of that, if we're going to throw out some plugs, go on uh, social media and look up uh, Sailor Moon Wisdom. You heard it here. a lot of things, and they're going to be doing something soon that will uh, 100% will support Black Lives Matter and other um, charities and stuff. So get ready. Excellent. Do it. And that's a a big one. It's growing very fast. One of our friends, friends of the pod. So, Oh, cool. Yeah. Sailor Moon Wisdom. Check it out. As on Instagram? Instagram, yes. Cool. Um, my best dress is Mr. Malik when he removes the fake knife and he's a big, fat, unstabbed stomach. Beautiful. <laughs> what a jelly belly. What I a love boy. that boy. Um, do you have an alt title? Uh, Amazo's Magic Ball Sack. Love it. I have uh, nothing. So, big pube day? Because he has that sack... Yes, with all the balls that, in it. With infinite balls. So infinite that's like, balls. ha, 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 infinite balls. Wow, this episode is a minute, an hour and five minutes. That's not bad. Not we bad. talked about the book for like 30 minutes. Oh, but we I still think. need to identify the witch. Oh, where's the witch? Uh, Frank. Frank, absolutely. A sorcerer is a witch. Yeah, 100%. Um, I also have... Um, I just want to bring this up here. Let me just turn to the page, which would be uh, 35. I have the most luscious liquor, Dave, a category that you <laughs> ascribed to our what? to our pod. <laughs> I don't remember. Any it, it wasn't actually luscious liquor. It was like, it was something other. <laughs> if, <laughs> best liquor or something? <laughs> yeah, something like that. We'll have to go back and, and check it out. Uh, page 35, the woman who owned the Midnight Mansion previously. Most luscious liquor, and here's why. People said that a crazy old woman had lived alone in the mansion for 40 years. She was rich, but so stingy, she wore ragged old clothes and ate nothing but peanut butter right out of the jar. 
When people <laughs> tried to visit her, she screamed, go away, and threw rocks at them. She had about 50 cats. She sounds awesome. But, uh, yeah, if you're, if you're scooping out peanut butter, just taking it right to the dome, <laughs> you're going to be doing some licking. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to just agree with you because I didn't pick up most luscious liquor. Well, there's a next time. There is a next time. We'll hope. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening to this. This is a quick episode. And you learned more about butts than you did about books. And you know what? I'm fine with that. Look, uh, make sure you get your daily allowance of fiber. It's hard to reach. It really is. It's it, Even if you take, I have a fiber supplement now, it's only three grams. You're supposed to have like 30 grams. It's insane. Holy shit. Do you eat 10 of them? No, I eat, well, I eat five of them. Five of them is one serving, which is three grams. What the fuck? I know. It's baffling. Damn. Fiber one. More like fiber a thousand. More like fiber none. <laughs> Got, Got him. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> fuck you, Quaker man. You Quaker little Quaker little oats man. You fucking yeah. English racist. Yeah, nice hat. Nice you hat, fucking... you dildo. Yeah. Cap- <laughs> Captain Crunch is way cooler than you. <laughs> Oops. All r- white idiots. <laughs> yeah. Oops, all Quaker dumbasses, virgin idiot. <laughs> fuck you. Yeah, you fuck your stupid little dick. You dumb dick, you have a donkey that plows your yards and plows your wife, you bitch. Yeah, and you fucking love it, you cuck. I hate <laughs> you, and I <laughs> hope you die. You are old and dressed old, so I bet you're dead by now, and I hope that you were so dumb you didn't. no one liked you, so you couldn't even have a family, and then you, your name died with you. I want to see if Betty Crocker fucking clothesline your ass. Um, Kellogg's w- tried to get women's clitorises cut off uh, and fuck him because he also does breakfast and also he's the reason we're circumcised. You're all assholes. Fuck you, Kellogg's. You'll never get a promo on our show. Tens of people yeah. will never know about your product. <laughs> yeah. All eight of our <laughs> listeners are going to be so upset about oatmeal. God. Anyway, uh... This has been Butthole Hour. I'll see you next time. (laughs) Welcome to our holes and good night. Good night and goodbye.